Hey everyone, this is Nick, and don't worry, this is not going to be your average tier list video. Nope, sitting in front of tier maker with my face the whole time because who wants to look at that for that long? Still, keep in mind that this is my personal ranking based on my experiences with my personal preferences. It's totally okay if you have completely different opinions and you can jump in the comments and let me know your own ranking for every single one of these desktops. Now, what will definitely be S tier though is this segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only Office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab or Grafana to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim, and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details, and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up, and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now, and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below, and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. So let's begin with the rankings then. They're gonna start at no way, then no thanks, then decent, good, and great. Let's start with GNOME. GNOME is a desktop environment I've used for a long time. It's currently the one I use on my laptop and my desktop, both on Fedora, but I also used it in the past on Ubuntu, Manjaro, and other distributions. It's extendable with extensions, it's customizable if you're okay with using Dconf Editor instead of purely graphical settings, and it's also themable, but that's getting more and more tricky. Now, GNOME as a desktop I find really nice to use, but there are things that bug me, and that means it will be in good and not in great. First, some really basic options aren't available by default, and that's just stupid. Second, extensions might be awesome, but if you move to a new GNOME release right after it's out, then most of your extensions won't be updated yet, and there's a 50-50 chance they won't work anymore. Still, it has, in my opinion, the best application ecosystem on Linux, and it looks amazing by default. Now that's highly subjective, I mean, some people think this looks good. I don't see it. GNOME also has the best touchpad gestures I used on any operating system, macOS included, and it's fast, smooth, and responsive. So good, but not great, because some options should really, really be there by default. <coughs> Font settings and startup applications. <coughs> and also because while I personally enjoy the default GNOME layout, it's very opinionated, and if you like a minimize button, a maximize button, a dock or a notification tray, you're gonna have to jump through hoops to get those. Now on to KDE, the most powerful desktop you could ever have on any operating system, period. It has simple defaults, super powerful options, plenty of readily available customization, and a large ecosystem of applications although not as good looking or up to date as GNOME's. I used KDE a ton. I always have a laptop with it installed and it was my main desktop environment for a lot of the time I was running this YouTube channel. Now it used to have a lot of bugs and stability issues, but in my experience that's not the case anymore. But I'm certain the comment section will be a nice chorus of people telling me how buggy their experience with it was. Now for me personally, it's not and the few big issues I had with it on laptops, notably touchpad gestures, are now fixed, even though they're not as good as GNOME's. And still, I'm going to put KDE in the great category. Why? Because its problems are not problems for me. The fact that it has tons of options and a very crowded settings app? I don't care about that. I know where to find things, and I would rather have to search for a few seconds to find what I want to change, then having to look it up online, because the option doesn't exist, and I'll need an extension or third-party app to change it. And also, every problem I have with KDE is generally fixed in the following bug fix release or major release. 
And yes, it absolutely means that I plan to switch my main desktop to KDE. My laptop will stay on GNOME because it's better on laptops, but on desktops, KDE is coming when I get the time. Now, Budgie. This one I used for a while on Manjaro as my main desktop environment. At the time, I would have put it in good. Nowadays, it's a no thanks for me. Budgie is basically GNOME plus a few add-ons like the side panel, customization options and better notifications. The thing is, Budgie has been kind of stuck in limbo since GNOME announced they would use Libid Vita. The main Budgie dev left Solus, the distro that was Budgie's flagship, and said he would work on making a brand new version of all Budgie apps using the Enlightenment Foundation libraries. And since then, no real news that I could see. And the current version of Budgie doesn't seem to move at all. That doesn't mean the experience is bad or anything, but it's still not moving forward at all and hasn't for a full year at least. And their decision to try and rewrite everything just because Libidvata exists makes no sense to me. Just make a theme manager that bypasses Libidvata. It can be done, it's been done. Now, most of what you can do with Budgie, you can do in regular GNOME with extensions and get a more up-to-date stack, more frequent updates and bug fixes and the same performance. So yeah, for me, Budgie is a no thanks. Let's move on to XFCE and this one is a hard one because on the surface, it looks very old and pretty ugly by default. It doesn't really support most of the new technological Linux stack like Wayland it's not a complete desktop experience without its own app center, for example, and it generally seems stuck in the past. On the other hand, it's extremely fast and responsive. It's very customizable with themes, layouts, panel applets and the like. And this means it can use most other desktop environments apps to fill in the gaps. XFC, I'm going to put in decent because while I personally would not use it, I can understand why people do and why they like it which I don't really see for anything that's ranked lower. Mate is another hard one. I loved GNOME 2 back in the day, and Mate is exactly that. That layout was wonderful back then, but nowadays it suffers from the same problems as XFCE. No Wayland support, no one-to-one -one touchpad gestures, not a complete experience without its own app store or design philosophy or guidelines. Mate isn't a desktop I use too much, apart from the month I spent with it back when I made my Mate experiment playlist. Don't watch it, I was even worse back then at this than I am today. Mate is going in the decent category. Just like XFC, I wouldn't use it personally, apart from the novelty of going back to GNOME 2, but I can understand why people like it especially if you have your eyes glued to the system monitor to make sure you don't go over 500 megabytes of RAM used at any time for some reason. Apparently, some people do that. Just buy another stick of RAM. One gigabyte of RAM usage at idle is not high. Now, Cinnamon is what Linux Mint uses, and it's pretty damn complete. It has applications for basically everything out of the box. You can do everything graphically, without needing to turn to a third-party app, whether it's managing software sources, installing applications, installing software packages, changing every setting, you name it. Bloat is in the eye of the beholder, and what some call bloated, I call freaking awesome. Cinnamon is also super customizable. You can change the whole layout, use different applets, change all the themes, the icons, the cursors, and all that out of the box without installing anything extra. And it's reasonably fast as well. But, because there's always a but, Cinnamon lacks touchpad gestures, something that is a huge negative for me. And some parts of its interface are really dated, notably how you change your panel layout. The new look makes it quite fresh and modern, in my opinion, but it's still not on par with Breeze or Advaita. And also they seem hell-bent on not even starting to support Wayland, which sucks. Because even if it's not 100% ready right now, it will be very soon. And Cinnamon taking two years to be as fluid and efficient as other desktops will definitely suck big time. So Cinnamon goes in the good category. It's a really solid choice, but next to KDE, I can't put it on par with it. 
Deepin Desktop is one that looks phenomenal on the surface, but that I could never use day to day. Now sure, it's beautiful and it has a design flair and a fluidity that is quite remarkable, but as soon as you try to install anything other than the default, it all falls apart. Nothing looks like the default Deepin apps and your desktop becomes a disjointed mess. The default apps are way too simple and can do, in most cases, even less than Gnomes, which are already pretty bare bones. The deep in app store is completely useless and even translations are quite hesitant. They have that charming Chinese style of using the subtly wrong word that almost means the thing that they think it means. It's quite nice and fun actually, especially coming from a non-native English speaker. But I just can't see why you would pick Deepin, unless its default apps are enough for you. It's a no thanks for me, especially considering you can't get it on most distros and that the default Deepin distro is kinda sus. Now, this one, if you had asked me three years ago, I would have put in great. Today, I'll put it in no thanks. If you're a long time viewer, I will give you a little bit of time to pick your draw off of the floor. Yes, the elementary fanboy in me is dead. This is Pantheon, elementary OS's desktop, and while I truly feel it had the edge over any other GTK-based desktop two or three years ago, it has lost every advantage it had during this time period. Pantheon was awesome because they had the best touchpad gestures, the best design guidelines, and the best app ecosystem. They had the best app store and a very simple, easy to use experience, although not customizable in the slightest. They had a rolling release model for apps and the desktop and it was a dream for me. But unfortunately, the team doesn't feel like it's big enough to tackle a distro, a desktop and a suite of apps anymore. Elementary OS 6 is the current release and while 7 should be out in the coming months, it won't bring anything revolutionary. It still uses X11, it's based on Ubuntu 22.04, almost a year old at that point, and while there are a few style changes for icons, there are no truly big features on the front or back end. And to make things worse, GNOME now has LibAdvita, which has spurred GTK devs that used to make elementary apps to make GNOME apps instead. And GNOME has better touchpad gestures than elementary now. And they also have a better app center now as well. And Elementary OS also has zero support for Wayland right now, which is also a big negative in my book. The fact they don't ship FlatHub enabled out of the box is a distro decision, not a desktop one, so I won't knock them for it. But it's still stupid. So that's a no thanks for me. There is no reason nowadays to pick Pantheon over GNOME because everything that Pantheon does can be replicated in GNOME with a few extensions and you'll get a better modern stack, better gestures, better applications, a better ecosystem. I don't see why you would go for elementary OS these days. Now, Unity is having a big revival right now with new features in the works, a new team and a new official Ubuntu flavor. But as it stands right now, it's only decent for me. Back when it was the official default on Ubuntu, I would have put it in the great category. Fight me. Nowadays, it's only decent because it looks pretty dated. The panel and its applets are straight from the GNOME 2 era. There isn't much customization to be had. The dash isn't as useful as it once was because filters at the bottom isn't really ergonomic with a mouse. And while it's a fun trip down memory lane for me, it doesn't really appeal to me all that much. It still has great stuff like the HUD or the global menu, but these things are overshadowed by the general age and feel of Unity. But the new version 7.7, .7, which will be the default on Ubuntu Unity 23.04 in a few months, will definitely fix a lot of those appearance related problems, a lot of the issues with the dash, and they even say they're gonna start working on Wayland support. They say it's coming soon. So maybe the next time I make this video, if I do make another one, it will jump up by one or two categories. And finally, there's Cutefish. The it was dead, but apparently it's not dead. The devs are working on it, but it still looks pretty dead to me, sort of desktop. And it's another one that looks great on screenshots, but it's going to be a no way for me. 
It is to the point that I had a few videos planned on that desktop environment that I never made because there wouldn't have been a single good thing to say about it. The default apps can do anything. Third-party apps look completely out of place. You can't change any setting at all. It's quite laggy, not to mention that the project still seems completely dead, despite one of the devs announcing he would pick it back up. It feels like a bad clone of macOS or iOS, and it just serves no purpose. There is no way I would use that thing, ever. Just use GNOME with extensions or KDE, both can replicate that layout better and be more functional and more up to date. And there are others I can't really rate. I never used LXQt, but looking at it quickly, I would say it's decent. Enlightenment, I never used at all. Lumina either. And for me, tiling window managers aren't desktops, and you really don't want me to say where I would put them. Well, I don't want to say, because that would trigger a lot of people. Of course, these are all my opinions, based on my experience and my personal taste, so yours might be totally different, so don't hesitate to let me know what you think down in the comments. Just make your own tier list with the same rankings that I use, and we'll discuss them. Just like I'll discuss today's sponsor. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany, and they make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. Now, the reason why you would want that over any old Windows device that you would slap Linux on is that with Tuxedo, you know that it's gonna run Linux because the hardware has been picked specifically to run Linux. And you're not limited in your choices either because they have a big, big range from laptops to desktops, ultrabooks, gaming stations, gaming laptops, gaming towers, workstations, whatever you want, they have it. They're all upgradable, repairable, and customizable, up to your own logo laser etched on the lid of your laptop, or your own custom keyboard layout etched on the keys of your laptop. So if you need a new device, don't go buy your Windows laptop. Click the link in the description below and get yourself a device from Tuxedo. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, there's also the dislike button. It still works, but do tell me why in the comments. I bet it's because you disagree on one of my rankings. And if you want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath this YouTube video. There's a PayPal link in the description and there are links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Both get access to an exclusive weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics that I'll cover. So check them out in the description below. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.